You're very welcome back to the programme. Now, we'll have the business uh, news shortly. But first, Ireland has one of the worst death rates from lung disease in Western Europe, with a particularly high incidence of asthma and cystic fibrosis. We also have a high rate of undiagnosed lung disease. And alongside, we have the lowest number of respiratory physicians per head of population. Now, to try and do something about all of this, a series of public lectures is kicking off tonight. And I'm joined now by Dr. Marcus Butler, a respiratory physician at St. Vincent's Hospital. Dr. Butler, thanks very much indeed for coming up to us this morning. And um, first off, why are we so bad when it comes to lungs? So I think it's a variety of factors. There's generally very poor awareness in the public about our lung health. We don't think of it, and we, therefore we tend to present very late with lung disease. The earlier you present, the better. There's also a misconception out there that lung disease is all smoking related and it's all self-inflicted. And in fact, that's not the case. We have below average rates of smoking in Europe, but we have the top of the table for lung death. So there is a lot more to the story than, than smoking. There's that's also, really interesting. So it's not yeah. our behaviour. There's something else going on there. The, it's our beha- it's, the, there are some, several of the lung diseases that have no relationship really with, with smoking, like asthma, cystic fibrosis, sleep apnea, sarcoidosis, and the list goes on and on. There are a lot of lung diseases that are just a sort of, we don't think of them and we don't, we don't see our doctor about them. We just take it for granted if we're having a bit of trouble breathing or wheezing or coughing. Yeah, and one of the key messages that, that the Irish Lung Health Alliance, a new body, is trying to get across is that we need to act on our symptoms of cough, breathlessness and wheeze and see our GP because these can very often be the earliest signs of lung disease that is very treatable the earlier you catch it. And we're not catching it now, is your experience, That's one it? of the big problems we have, is that people just don't think of their lung health. If, you, if I asked you which is the biggest cause of death in Ireland, is it heart disease or lung disease, people would say heart disease. And in fact, they'd be wrong, because lung disease causes more deaths than, than cardiac disease in, really? in Ireland. Really? I mean, you, you really problem. wouldn't know that. Yeah, it's a, it's a message that, that's, that, that's lost uh, to a large extent. And part of the problem in Ireland has been, you know, for, as health professionals, we have many different voices speaking about separate lung uh, conditions. The Irish Lung Health Alliance has brought together over 14 different such charitable organisations to make a common joint-up effort to raise the profile and awareness of lung health. So, so obviously you're trying to get to the public, I mean to individuals to take more care of their own lung yes, health. Yeah. Uh, what about the role of GPs here? Do you think that Irish GPs are sufficiently engaged here or do they say, oh sure, it's just a cough, you'll get over it, leave it be? GPs are getting uh, are overworked first of all and they have, yeah. they have so much uh, on their plate to contend with but it, really it's a matter of getting patients to, to not accept cough and breathlessness and wheeze which understandably people might think, you know, that's just part of getting older. It's not in fact. Um, we, we, we shouldn't really be developing those symptoms. We shouldn't be getting chest infections every winter that's not normal yet many people just ignore this for years and think ah oh, I'm getting older so what, what could it be if you do get chest infections frequently over 400,000 people in Ireland have asthma which is caused by chest infections it has nothing to do with smoking over 400,000 people in Ireland have COPD emphysema COPD, a lot of it is chronic. chronic obstructive pulmonary disease which used to be called emphysema a lot of it is smoking related and there are many people with COPD have never touched a cigarette but these symptoms are ignored until it's much later in the process and harder to treat and if you do present quite late on in the process where you're, you know, you're struggling to breathe, is there much that can be done? There is still a great deal that can be done. And one of the key points we want to get out is that exercise has fantastic benefits for lung health at all stages of lung disease also. It, it, even before you get disease, by taking up regular exercise, we can actually discover symptoms that we might otherwise have ignored. That You should not be out of breath doing your exercise that easily. And if you are, you should think about seeing your GP about it. Um, and later in life, uh, exercise extends life, reduces hospitalizations with lung disease and makes people feel better, their quality of life is greatly improved. Pulmonary re rehabilitation is a part of what we do which involves a lot of exercise for elderly patients who can tolerate this exercise even with lung disease. So the treatments can really help. And if you're doing exercise, I mean say as a preventative thing as a younger person, I mean are you expanding your lung capacity there or are you just kind of keeping it healthy? Exercise has several benefits. So, you, you, so you, you're keeping your weight down and extra weight makes it harder for the lungs and the heart to work. You're also, at a microscopic level, there are uh, inflammatory mediators that are produced by, by not exercising that you can Im uh, improve upon through regular exercise. And also the heart and the lung are intimately connected to each other and function really as a unit. And uh, by exercising regularly, we make the heart and lungs much more efficient at doing their job of putting oxygen into the body and getting rid of carbon dioxide. So we should all be doing a bit of exercise to prevent it. And even if you do have lung disease, keep going. It, yes. Can I ask you, I mean, when you think of lungs, the, the and the panic really of not being able to breathe properly, it must be a very, very distressing condition At to At the advanced stages of. of lung disease and during flare-ups of lung disease, it is incredibly distressing for patients. They feel like they're breathing through a straw. 
they can't get their breath in, that there's this clamp around their chest. It's, it's a horrible condition and it's needless. There are things we can do to stop it happening in the first place and things we can do to alleviate those symptoms and, and, and put off the day considerably. Uh, whereby somebody's held back by those symptoms. And uh, Dr. Berkley, can I ask you, you've spoken a lot about patients and what they need to do. We also do have a very low number of respiratory physicians like yourself in Ireland. Is that part of the problem as well, that people aren't being referred on because there's no one to refer them to? It is unfortunately part of the problem that uh, we have the, uh, the lowest number of uh, consultants, physicians and trainees in uh, respiratory medicine in, in, in Europe, uh, which has came out in, in recent data that, uh, through the European White Lung effort. And, and we need to um, uh, really do more about having more specialists but also getting patients to the doors of the doctors uh, earlier than we've done before. Okay well listen good luck with it. I know a series of public lectures starting tonight in Dublin at 6.30 in the Mansion House. And I might mention lunghealth.ie. Lunghealth.ie. Okay well Thank listen you. Dr Butler thanks very much for coming thanks in for this morning. You're welcome. Now it is time for the business news and Brian Finn is here. Brian. Keelan thank you very much. Now Ryanair shares are down over 10%.